And in the Quran, he said that I he, he created heaven and earth لِتَعْلَمُوا so that you may know. And it, it is known those sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Jalla Majd who created the creation, not out of need, not out of compulsion, out of his own will and his pleasure. For example, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah rafiqun wa yuhibbu rifq. Allah is gentle and he loves gentleness. So the meaning that any human being, any person, human being, jinn, whoever, they have this quality of gentleness. Allah Azza wa Jalla loves that person. So Allah is the most infinitely patient. He loves patience. Allah is Rahim and He loves mercy. So if that mercy is present in anywhere, any person, so this is the regime. So one should know that uh, Allah Jalla who created us in the world of spirits. And in the world of spirits, the arwah, as the Quran says in the verse of the Quran, that Allah Jalla Majdu who showed those arwah, they were living in the heavens, they saw heavens, also they were brought down to the earth, as it's mentioned in the tafasir. They were shown the dunya, the jannah, that everything. So that is why inside you, every human being, there is worship and love. Now, if they, they can choose anyone, anything to worship or love. So if they choose to worship something else, they've given most precious things to some, somewhere else, which will, they will actually obviously regret. Similarly, if they give this emotion, which is very precious emotion, which love to someone, something wrong thing, they will suffer. But the emotion, the quality is in there. So all human beings, they are wings. So someone might be idealizing a model or a pop star or a football star or actress. So wherever you, you can do that, but that's what we are discussing, that is it useful? Is it beneficial? Because our arwah, they have the knowledge of the heavens, although we don't have, because they've been there. So that is not Muslim, non-Muslim, across the cultures. They love beauty. They like beauty. They love beautiful people, handsome people. They want to have big houses or mansions. If it was up to them, if they like, they want to have palaces. They want fame and name. They want power. They want kingdom. They want, they like like you see a person who become rich, they want to live in countryside or have gardens and fruits and they like the means to travel, fastest means, the best means to travel. As Allah Azawajal said in the Quran, Zuyina lin nas, hubbu shahawat. That hub is in the person, is the programmed in the person. So when we come here, we are not inhabitant of this earth. You are an alien. You only have all the, your clothing. And the Prophet ﷺ said very clearly, he said, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharib. The live in this world as though you are strange. You are a stranger. What is your home? Where is your home? Where your mother and father came from? 
سیدنا آدم علیہ السلام اور سیدہ حوا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ that was our home this is we are alien it's a testing place we are alien these things are alien to us so this is not where we belong so inside we are prince and princesses of another kingdom which we were used to live there before like now this has one story let's say there's another story in the heavens in the sky then we used to see the glory so much so that even we heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking Alastu bi rabbikum am I not your lord so we heard that saying as well uh, that utterances so we have we are programmed we find peace in worship and also because we have seen all those things so why I am saying we love beautiful clothes we love beautiful we to make our faces beautiful we, that's why we use makeup that's why we clean that we choose our clothes we want our house our room house, houses to be big we like waterfall now that's across the cultures why because all of these things remind us of the real world where we came from the heavens that's what actually everyone is trying to make so a person wants to be rich why does he want to be rich I want this car I want this thing I want uh, to own this so everyone is trying to build their own paradise those who don't have big gardens they try to build small gardens those who have don't have houses they buy and rent those who have they want more and they want to choose partners for themselves spouses which are most beautiful they get or not that's a different matter because this is a world of testing but in Jannah the Hoors the Malaika the people who will enter Jannah the human beings will enter Jannah will be at the utmost uh, highest level beauty so I'm just actually letting you know background that between Allah and us is a love story the true love that a lover said oh I like this person and love story starts we were not even existing the one al wadu the one who loves us he created us and wanted to express his love to us and we now have been sent on this face of the earth to express love back to Allah Jalla Majduhu. What his worship is an act of love. Charity is an act of love. Salah is an act of love. So we are supposed to now actually also love, reciprocate that love which Allah Azza wa Jal shown. He created us, He gave us, He wants to bless us. He's shown the kingdom, He's mentioned the Quran, kingdoms are ready. You like beauty, there's beauty in Jannah. You will be given beauty in life. You will like palaces. There were palaces with thousands and thousands actually rooms in, in Jannah. You will like spouses. You will have spouses. The most beautiful, the most handsome. You will like kingdom. You will be queens of your own kingdom. You will be kings of your own kingdom. So that is the deal. That Allah, what we want for ourselves... And what Allah wants for us is better. We want, why people go away from deen or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, I want to be with this person. Yes, that person, when you are with the person, then you know reality that that person cannot value your love. Oh yes, I want this job. Once you have this job, but it's taken away your time and things. I want this, I want this. And a person loses and suffers again and again. What Allah wants us to give us what we want, better things and forever. So I'm not saying to you, don't, oh, you shouldn't be loving beauty. Oh, you shouldn't be wanting to be beautiful. You shouldn't be having, uh, wanting spouses at your choice. You shouldn't have be having... Uh, cars 
you should not have houses, you should not enjoy. No, that's not the thing. The thing is, do you want to only enjoy for a short time at a lower level, in the lower world, which is dunya in Arabic, means the lower world. Or same things at a very higher level, higher quality, and much more which you have, have never imagined, Allah Azza wa Jal wants to give you. Plus, greatest thing is, وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٍ Allah's pleasure, the love of Allah Jalla Majduhu, is the greatest actually. So it's like someone wants to give you a fake, you want telephone? Okay, I want, someone has in their backyard made a telephone, okay, I want to sell that, or you give me thousand pounds, and this is your telephone. I still want thousand pounds. And I want, someone says, no, I will buy you a Samsung, iPhone, the thousand pounds, that is worthwhile. That you should have. Not this, 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 this is actually not, it doesn't have good quality. It will stop working tomorrow. It doesn't have the same, actually, features. But you are, you go after the box. Okay, yeah, this will be fine. I'll give thousand pounds. But you'll get things, something, worth is not even one pound, two pound. So it's, that is the thing. We have, as someone said, that if you are in a desert and you only have five liters water, you won't spend that water or actually use that water in washing yourself and things. You will say, well, I'm in a desert, in, there might be, not be water anywhere, so I should save it to get across the de desert. So you will save it, you won't misuse it. Similarly, you have one life, it, one, not can of water, container of water, but one life, that life is also filled like water, time is like water, it drips out. So either you can use it for actually making your life forever, or you can waste it here as well. So that is, shaitan says, shaitanu, Shaitan says to you, you don't have this. You can't enjoy. And, and for the, on that basis, he then actually takes you towards evil, towards obscenity, and towards wrong things because you are not able to enjoy. Shaitan says, but Allah says, no. I want my servants to enjoy in this life and the hereafter, forever and ever. So, a person should think really very deeply, as I will be just showing you a little bit, although you know these things. Um, as I mentioned, Al-Wadud, the one who loves. So it's Allah Azza wa Jal who designed our hearts and created the love as well. So, like Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jalani says, everyone loves you for their own self. Your husband might love you, but his own self. Your parents love you, yeah, there's some actually love, and, but they also have some, okay, my son, daughter will pray for me, she will work for me, she will look after me when I'm old, she will do dua for me, looks. Who is that who loves you for you only, as a person? That is the point to think. That is the point of reflection, that everyone has have their own invested interest, their own greediness, their own, actually, some interest. Oh, if you do give me this, I'll give you this. But who is the one who only wants to give and bless? And he doesn't want anything personally for him. We can't benefit him in any way. That is Allah Jalla Majdu. That is the true love. Others, it will go away. Like one person said to a, a sheikh that I have fallen in love with a person, a girl or girl, see a boy. They said that, have you seen them? I asked. 
No, have you seen the person? You've seen the cover. The reality of the person. Oh, the reality of the person is the spirit, is the Ru. Have you seen? Or have you, have you just actually fallen for the cover? Well, I've not seen it. So you see, you really not. That's why Allah Jalla Majduhu. You see, people always judge you mostly on based upon how you look and how to, etc. As the Prophet Islam said, Inna Allah la yanduru. Allah does not look at your out figures and your how wealthy you are. It's the real thing. Walakin yanduru ila kulubikum. Allah Jalla Majduhu looks at your hearts. You can say to people, oh, I have a very golden heart. They say, if you don't have a beautiful face, I don't want to know you. That's it. I have this. But Allah Jalla Majduhu, this is it. This is true love. The one who love which is for you only. There's no return. Allah cannot benefit from the love of anyone. From the ibadah of anyone. So al wadud so recognize who is what dealing what, what fraud is happening with you a fraud a big fraud so the heart is yes a seat of emotion one of the uh, you may say powerful emotion they say rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in one hadith he said la yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna habba ilayhi that none of you can believe, be a believer until they love me more than why he said well love because who, if you love something else it's as though you are giving your remote control your full control not remote but full control to that person they are going to dictate you they are going to that's why you hear people are leaving sometimes their parents they displease their parents they displease Allah they leave their job they Meaning, uh, spoil their honor, their reputation, just because there's someone else controlling them. No, you are not slave. You are only slave to Allah, Abdullah. And to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you give love. Why? They won't misuse that control. They will have control of you. You love them. They now control you. Okay. Now they will want good things for you. If you love them, they'll say, do this, do this. Always benefit other people. Once they have your control, they will want all kinds of evil things from you. Do this, do this, don't do this, leave this person, who this. So understand, you don't give a pin code of your bank and of your, your code of your phone to someone, the code where you have kept your jewelry to someone, while they are limited things. What about the most the precious thing which is your heart, which is the love in it, you give to someone without actually knowing what that person is, he might be misusing it in any, in any way. So guarding our hearts, like you guard your purse, your money, your bank, your phone, more precious than that is your heart. And Love, as you have heard from uh, other, mashallah, speakers and scholars, in Arabic, love is comes from the word habba. It's like a seed; it grows in the, the true love, not the lust. Lust comes from outside, and that's it. Love, this is a seed. When the seed grows, it becomes into a tree. Then you can see the effect of the person who you love. Really, you are the reflection of who you love. For example, the seed grows, then actually it will come, it have flowers. It have, so a person who, let's say, love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, their sunnah, their way of life, or their teachings are going to overwhelm the person. They are going to reflect it. If I love a pop star, the love will outgrow, and they will see. Oh, I should have red shirt. I should have a for example, a suit like this, or I should look like this, I should walk like this. Where it's coming from? The seed, because the seed has taken place and now uh, the branches are showing itself. Also, um, one should know very simple three things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that, or, or I may say just uh, to make you understand, 
Do you have choice who to love? Fall, do you just fall in love? Do you just actually give your heart away? Or you have a choice? Now many people think they don't have choice. Oh, I've fallen in love for this person. Now it's end of the world for me. If I don't get, I'm going to commit suicide. This, I can't do anything about it. Well, this is your thoughts. In reality, in the Quran and in the Prophet Islam hadith, it's mentioned you have control who to love. It's not, it just actually happens and that's it. It's not. Otherwise, the Quran wouldn't say that love Allah and love the Messenger of Allah. Or the Prophet Islam would not say to us that you love me more than, because those Sahaba could very well say, oh, we don't have choice over who to love. It just happens. It's just actually without control. No, no. You have 100% choice who you fall in love with and who you don't want to be. It's up to you. You use that control or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran three things. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ So just to show those things to you. First is eyes and seeing. Love happens with eyes and seeing. More, many people fall in love. They have choice to see what, to not to see what, to see something again and again, again and again. And that have effect. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ Some mean hearing. You've not seen someone, but you're hearing on the phone, hello, how are you? Your voice looks very, seems very sweet, etc., etc. Or you hear about someone and you fall in love. Sayyidina Musa Islam did kalam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It said, the scholars say, why is it that no other prophet have said, Ya Allah, I want to see you in this worldly life? Why is it only Sayyidina Musa Islam? They said that one of the reasons is that he spoke to Allah, he heard Allah's voice. When you hear someone, you want to see them as well. That's the next day. And the next day is you hear someone on the phone, now you want to see them, now you want to chat them, chat with them, now you want to see them. Then next stage comes, you want to meet them. So where is the choice? The choice is there. Does they say one is like a passing type love? We don't know, but the scholars, or the behavior, people who study mind, uh, they say that actually one is the person, like I was going, passing along, I saw a car, I saw a person I liked. They say this type of passing, if a person does not focus on it, this type of likeness, within one, two weeks, it goes away. And the extreme love, they say also only lasts 18, to two, uh, 18 months to two years. That's why it's statistics. I'm not mentioning to you, or I'm not actually criticizing anyone, but it is statistics that those people who married by choice and this romantic uh, people, by, they end up divorcing 70% after two years because that extreme kind of emotion also dies down after 18 months, it will be a normal husband and wife or, they, or it will just go, they'll just actually just part their ways. Then people say, oh, someone said, oh, Romeo and Juliet had great love, Leila Majnu had great love, and he, Ranja in India, they had, I said, only because they didn't meet. <laughs> if they met and lived, and husband and wife had children and had to, do nappies and do other things, you won't hear these stories, their stories. Their stories are famous because everyone is from far, everyone looks good and beautiful and especially if you like something, it goes more to the extreme. So what I'm saying is that you have choice over, Allah said this is three blessings he created. meaning hearing, afida. Third thing is, if you think about, this is power of imagination, tukhayyil. If you imagine, fantasize, and think about something, or you've seen one person, now you actually think again and again, with their pictures, their things, things related to it, whatever. That and your thoughts, 
It's like they are in the muraqaba, deep meditation state, thinking about anything. That also can actually create love of something. So three basic three things, three switches you have if you want to love. Anyone who have loved someone is through these three channels only. One of these three. Either they've heard about them, or they have actually seen them, or they've been thinking, imagining uh, about them. But look at the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One, a lady who embraced Islam and mentioned that the the most the thing which actually affected her most about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Everything is impressive about him was that in the state he was not well in the last days so much weakness he could not walk he was ill fever headache imagine in that state even people forget their own family or oh, we are now in fever we are now actually experiencing illness and we are frail and thing two persons had to support him on both sides because his legs would not actually be maintained on the earth. This state, and he said, going on, sat on the member, said to the Sahaba Ikram, I wish I could see my brothers, meaning brothers and sisters. So they said, um, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we are your brothers. He said, no, you are my companions. I am thinking about, I wanted to physically, I wish to meet my ummah which is yet to come until day of judgment. Like I met you physically, I want to see them as well. I wish I could do and I could meet them. Imagine the pure love for you who are sitting here and the people to come. Properly Islam, sallallahu obviously he will meet on the day of judgment. But he said, I wish I could meet my brothers and sisters. I am just interpreting this hadith. Meaning those people who will, he said that who will believe on me, but would have not seen me. But I like to meet them. I love to meet them. And he, his tears were flowing because of this, because of your love. This is true love. So, mind also, so you can actually, whatever you think mostly, that's why we are commanded to be in dhikr, be in good thoughts, uh, because that's going to actually create love. How does love increase? There's one way to increase love. Once you have some people say, yeah, we love, want to love Allah, his messenger, we love one. You know now, there are three switches now. If you want to increase love of anything, anyone. Number one, if you spend wealth on something, the love, the value increases. Imagine in the car you have brought, someone scratches, it feels your heart scratched. For example, it is, or someone's phone drops, it seems their heart has dropped. So that's because they have actually invested some wealth, some energy, so wealth. Sahaba Ikram did, that's why we are asked to spend in the way of all. Not that Allah wants, or actually you may say benefits, because Allah wants us to have more love of Him. And when we spend wealth in the way of Allah, the love will increase. Like the Sahaba Ikram, Rizwan Majmai. So wealth, secondly, time. If you give time to something, that love uh, love of that thing or that person will increase as well. And third is effort, meaning how your activities, your abilities, your strength, your resources, your talents, where you actually use them. So coming up to now, sometimes there's a problem that if someone has fallen, like the previous speakers have mentioned, wrongly, in love of someone, or they shouldn't be loving this person, or this thing, materialistic world, or love of fame and name. How can they uninstall? How can they get out? Like someone might say, wife, oh, like this person, but this person is married already. So what do you do? You don't destroy the life of others and yourself. 
there is a way to actually uninstall or delete, switch off the love. So if the perils of misplaced love, if the heart and mind is engaged in wrong things, materialistic things, the lower dunya, not the higher dunya, it's not that Allah does not want us to have these boats or these pleasures or these houses, palaces. He wants us to have the best and forever, not temporal and then we leave. So the, the reason or the way, so this world doesn't break your heart, you break your own heart by handing it, it to the world. So this is dunya. The possessions and love of this world will ultimately fade away. What will you do? Kalla ida dukka til ardu dakkan dakka. When the things of love are not. They are couples who are living 80 years, they love each other. They are 80 years old, but now they have dementia or some even forgotten, they don't know the other person who you love. These are realities of this dunya. So the thing is that. We are, Allah does not say, Prophet Islam does not say, in the Quran it comes, Qul in kana abaukum wa abnaukum. They don't say love, don't love anything or anyone. They say love for the sake of Allah. So have you loved your husband for the sake of Allah or he's just like a man for you? That's why you love. Do you love your mother for the sake of Allah or it's like a temporal or by instinct? Love like animals even have for each other. So, I love Allah Azawajal because then I'm safe. He's not going to misuse my this emotion because he is my God. And then loving everyone through him. So one love to the husband, brother, wife, parents, money. Also, I love to make akhirah and things. So understand, one is, the other is to love through shaitan. Shaitan is your agent. And you say, okay, you deal with my, like you invest in shaitan, uh, the motion of love, and let him deal. Oh, you like this person, yeah, you should have this person, this thing, a thing. So is it wise to love through shaitan or to love through Allah Jalla Majduhu? For Allah's sake. Again, I'm saying that we don't, we, it does not mean we don't say, nor the Quran and Sunnah say, that don't love other things. It's the greatest love should be of Allah and His Messenger, then actually other loves as well for their sake. That Allah has commanded, we love this. Anyway, coming to the last point before we finish. Uh, if someone has been affected by love of wrong things, like of non th uh, things, people, gambling, drugs, or smoking, or bad behavior, or pornography, whatever, jealousy, other thing, of love of ego, another thing, or any person, and they want to, they want to leave them now, they're not, they're not just going to go out, actually, by themselves. There is a way to do, there is a technique to do, Look, here it is, on one side it is your conscious mind. Just an example, this is not the actually reality, but just to explain you. Another is your subconscious mind. Subconscious mind if it is controlling your heart, everything, anything which comes in there, that really becomes the master. So, let's say something wrong is installed. Uh, okay, you have... Um, in subconscious mind, you have love of any bad thing or any person, anything which you don't want. The way to get rid of it, firstly I said, close these three switches off, eyes, ears, hearing, and thinking about them. And then you have to resist every time you have this urge to meet, to think, to see, to talk, or to do something, be it cigarettes, be it anything else, if you resist one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as it says actually, until 15, it's not possible. You have to resist more times, let's say 30 to 40 days, 30, let's say 30 times or 30 days, you have done it 60 times, at the, until it becomes uninstalled 
from your subconscious mind to the conscious mind. And then you know already it's not good, you can just say goodbye. But this will not happen just because actually, okay, I've decided that I don't want to like this thing, like this habit, like this style of life. It's not. There is actually change. Similarly, anything else as well is the person. That's how you, that's why Allah Zawajal in the Quran to attain taqwa, he prescribed Ramadan, that it takes time. So now you are the master. You can take out anything from the heart, from your habits, and you can install as well. If you want good habit, let's say you want to pray, you want to speak gently, it's not going to just from tomorrow. It's going. You have to practice that actually until it becomes an installed in your conscious and subconscious mind. And then actually it will come to your heart. Alhamdulillah. Then it comes to your heart and it settles. That becomes your long term, your real, your trait, your khul, it comes. So remember now, from now, if you want to leave any bad habit, if you want to attain any bad, good, the method is there. That actually start doing it. You want to, let's say, uh, you have anger problem and you just react badly. So now every time when next time you're angry, control yourself, control yourself, control yourself until you, it is uninstalled that behavior and good one you can install there as well. So, so these organs are very, very important. Stomach, eyes, hands, feet, beside them, others are important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another hadith he mentioned great. So the source of love is Allah, it is only the right that your heart is solely for him and then through him he says loves the creation as well, benefit the creation. You become attached to Allah Azza wa Jal and connected to everything. You don't have attachment, strong attachment to everything. So connecting to, attaching your heart to Allah but connecting with even an ant which is walking, you should have love. This is the uh, creation of my Lord, my Rabb. As Prophet ﷺ said, uh, said al-khalqu, that creation are dependence, ayal, they're dependence of Allah. And Allah loves the person who mostly benefits them. So we are not, this is a beautiful way, beauty of Islam, that it's not negating anything, it's just giving you the best of the best and the way so that you enjoy. So al-wadud, so are you, this is the name, ever loving, the real love, the source of the love, that's from which Allah has created love. So are you ready to embark on your journey towards experiencing true love of Al-Wadud, of Lord Almighty, while forsaking and leaving the superficial forms of illusory love, because that's illusion and counterfeit relationship, which actually I don't know. So that's actually, inshallah, now the time of Maghrib has approached as well. Uh, but for still, if you have any uh, any question you may ask one or two otherwise we inshallah finish and those who wants to really uh, embark upon this journey um, if you can uh, bring on the screen uh, yeah uh, there is this is the uh, actually uh, some context you so that which will help you actually stage by stage, if you want, person said, yeah, my life is in a mess, I want to start the journey to the pleasure of Allah, there's a way to do it. Here there will be people or actually the uh, online uh, uh, help as well available. Yeah, it's the most exciting. There's a love of my husband and wife, girlfriend and boyfriend, okay, father and mother and, and, and sister and this. One is less a story of love of your and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah and his servant, has, or the, his servant start. What actually is exciting love. That's why in the most of the stories when they end, they say, they, when the story ends, they say uh, they lived happily uh, forever thereafter. Thereafter they lived happily. Why they don't show? Because they can't live happily after that. That's the end of dunya. If they show the how things will happen, they, it will be destruction. But this story will continue. When death comes, you become more closer to your Lord who you love. Death can't separate you 
and those who you love for Allah, Allah khilla yomadin ba'duhum li ba'din aduv illa al-muttaqeen. When even they say, it's not day of judgment, it's not end of the world. Even end of the world comes, your love is still unshaken because actually you have loved someone who is baqi, living forever and ever living. And even day of judgment and then paradise, alhamdulillah, a person cannot imagine. So may Allah Azawajal bless you and the speakers and the daughters and those who have spoken before. And forgive me and yourself and enable us to actually direct our love towards the true uh, source and also through him for the sake of him we then love the creation whoever he says we love as the Prophet Islam said man habba lillah and the hadith goes that whoever loves for Allah's sake, hates for Allah's sake, gives for Allah and withhold faqadis takmal al iman the iman becomes actually complete If anyone does have a question that we can direct towards Sheikh Ahmed Bag during this time, please just raise your hand. I'll be happy to come around the room. Don't be shy. This is a wonderful opportunity. Bismillah. Um, I just wanted to ask what. What does it mean to love for the sake of Allah? Right, okay. What does it mean for, to love for the sake of Allah? You see, I might like a person, he can be uh, my brother, she can be my wife and thing, because I like her, I, that's from directly between me and them. One is for the sake of Allah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla maiduhu says that for example you should love your mother or or love your wife love your sister love the creation so now i detach i detach myself from them i am attached to allah but connected to them so now the love the expression which i show of actually tolerance which i show even i don't like to show like that now for the sake of allah azawajal mean that what however allah jalla who says Yes, you love this person, be good to your mother, be tolerant with your wife. So now a person, sometimes his nafs himself wants to explode, but then he thinks, oh, Allah Azza wa commands, do to this, this. So that's what it means actually, that through Allah, that how much and in which way to express, then actually it saves your relationship. Otherwise, it's left to you, then you will finish it off and think, then etc., etc. Yeah, inshallah. Are there any more questions? Bismillah. That's fine. If there's nothing, then we can do dua and inshallah. Or Tuni, any other item left? Any? Okay, Jazakallah. We now, we have wonderful opportunity, the time of Maghrib, and also to do dua to our Lord, who we were speaking about, make us sincere, and we want, we, Prophet Islam longed, he asked for help, uh, love of, he said, Allahumma inni asaluka hubbak, oh Allah, I ask and seek and beg you to grant me your love, and hubba man yuhibbuk, and the love of those who you love, and wal amal alladhi yuballiwun ila hubba ila hubbu then the amal the many practices which actually also like we discussed some of the things so we also will inshallah seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi allahumma lakal hamdu kama anta ahluhu salli ala sayyidina muhammadin kama anta ahluhu wa fa'al bina ma anta ahluhu fa inna ka ahlu taqwa wa ahlu al-mawfira ya rabbal alameen ya arham al-rahimeen haba yu fadl and grace we are unworthy, especially myself, sinful, do not know anything. Ya Rabbal Alameen, we seek your pleasure and forgiveness from all the wrongdoings which we have done in and at our lives, be it with the body, mind and heart. And we do dua, we seek and we beg through your blessed name, Allah and Rahman and Rahim and Malik and all the 99 names and by the name which you are revealed in the Quran, 
or on the Prophet Ali Salatu Waslam, or the name which uh, the attributes which are revealed on any of the prophets, any of the angels, any of the divinely revealed books, or they are written on Luhi Mahfuz, or they are in your knowledge. By them we seek not anything, you from you, your love from yourself, and your pleasure from you, and we seek your protection from all the harms and all the evils by the virtue and wasila of your, all these blessed names. Ya Rabbul Alameen, grant us this goodness of this world and hereafter, whatever goodness Rasulullah prayed for, any prophet prayed for, any angel prayed for, any pious, righteous servants prayed for, we ask to grant us that goodness. And we seek refuge and protection from everything from which Rasulullah sought protection. All the Anbiya and Malaika sought protection from all the evil wherever it exists. Ya Rahman ar Rahimeen, Ya Malika Yawmiddin, enable us to live by Islam, die with Iman, resurrected with the pious. Bless all these, our daughters and sisters who are sitting, especially who have shared their thoughts and their nasiha uh, with these blessed daughters. Grant them, increase them in knowledge and wisdom and sincerity. And after all, Ya Rabbul Alameen, is your acceptance. If you become pleased with us, everything we have, if you do not become pleased, even having everything, we've lost everything. Ya Rabbul Alameen, fulfill the lawful needs and desires of all Muslims and grant the light of Iman to all non-Muslim, the light of Tawbah and Taqwa to all sinful servants like myself and the light of acceptance and shukr to all the pious and the righteous. Ya Rabbul Alameen, whoever does have any in their minds, any need, any problem, any difficulty, we all present you are our, our, our Rabb and Rabb al-Alameen. Ya Arham al-Rahimeen, Ya Malika, Ya Middeen. Allahumma fill lana, warhamna, wa liwalidayna, wa li mashaykhina, wa li jami' al-mu'minin, wa al-mu'minat, wa al-muslimin, wa al-muslimat, wa al-ahya'i minhum, wa al-amwat. Ya Rabb al-Alameen, bless all the organizers and those people who help to conduct uh, this gathering. And Ya Arham al-Rahimeen, we are in need, we are in need, and we want, and we are seeker of yours, we want your love as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa prayed for your love. Grant us one drop of the ocean of your love and, your, and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the love of the pious and the love of the good deeds and anything which draws us closer to you. Ya Rabbul Alameen, Ya Arham al Rahimeen. Erase and delete the love which actually of anything and any one which actually takes us away uh, from you. We don't want anything, be it this dunya, be it the kingdom of dunya, the whole of the world, if it will take us away from you. We want every blessing and every ni'mah only which takes us closer to you. Ya Arham al Rahimeen, Ya Malik Yawmiddin. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim ameen wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Jazakallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all with his uh, divine and precious and sacred love and may your hearts actually be cleansed with every other love which is harmful and which will destroy you and which is harming you. Hazrat Saab, we just have a small gift for you in gratitude of your attendance today, Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much everyone for remaining so respectful throughout every single speaker that's in present today.